So next up is Jimmy Shi, who is one of uh, Bob's uh, doctoral students. He's now a professor at the University of South Florida. Hello, everyone. I'm honored to be here to celebrate Bob's 70th birthday. Um, as one of the most recent students from Bob's Rochester group, uh, I have the privilege to continue to work with Bob after I left Rochester. And today I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about uh, um, my ongoing research that is being um, influenced and, and being conducted with Bob. So um, <clears throat> the title is The Quest to See More of Light. As we know that human eyes are only responsible to maybe color plus the intensity of light, but uh, light is more than that. And as we will see, um, that what we are interested in um, is to develop devices that can help us to see more aspect that is usually hidden or is missing from our human eyes. Before I come to that, um, my interaction or my great journey in optics really started um, off as I took an airplane from China and landed in this beautiful city in 2004. Um, and th for those who know me, that I'm a big fan of Hollywood movies. So from uh, different movies, I feel sometimes, especially charmed by characters, um, maybe there is a commonality between all of them. Um, so uh, when uh, on the first, first uh, I think it was the first semester of the semesters, and uh, there was a professor with a similar charm uh, give us a talk about uh, how to, how to um, slow down the light. It really fascinated me, and I made a decision that oh, I really want to um, be working on this cool stuff. So I've been working in the next uh, few years. Uh, of course, as a tradition in the group, this is not the only work I did. Um, I was scattered off on other pro fantastic experiments too, but um, I was fortunate to do a, a number of work that can be um, characterized under this umbrella of slow and fast light. So here I am uh, with a um, thesis with fundamentals and applications of slow light in 2011. Uh, well, I think I, my defense was 2010 because uh, there was two most precious things in my life happened in 2010. My son was born in August and my thesis defense was in October, I think. Um, so after that, Bob, at that time, Bob was uh, starting to really show some quantumness, and so he becomes a superposition in two different universities. And uh, this allowed me, and, and with this opportunity and with family considerations, I stayed in Rochester for, as a, um, a, a, a kind of a, a postdoc to, to, to be uh, managing all the ongoing or help with the different aspects of the project. And one of the projects we were doing was uh, um, really in terms of quantum images and other type of imaging uh, techniques. So as we see that light is not only defined by intensity and color, but a lot there is actually, um, the light is a wave, so a wave has a, a face front or a face of structure of it, and the light has a polarization of it. Um, and light has uh, something uh, coherence out of it. So these different degree of freedoms are usually ignored by regular cameras as well as our human visions, but um, they also carry as much information as the intensity and the colors. So the challenge for me, or one of the challenges I pick is because there is so much more that to be seen, we should develop super glasses, or which I really, uh, uh, took the, 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 uh, the terms, but more developing imaging techniques that can see more of light. So the first task was really inspired by another uh, professor at the U of Ottawa, Jeff Landing. Uh, he had a great paper on how to see the face structure um, using something called a direct measurement. So my vision as a um, sort of a applied scientist or a more engineering physicist uh, I want to really develop things that can make the best use of the current technologies. Um, so 
uh, on top of Jeff's great pioneering work, we, I was thinking maybe I, should, uh, I could rearrange how the direct measurement techniques of the protocols work. And so here, to measure the complex field uh, of a given, uh, given transverse planes, we basically need uh, two consecutive measurements. One is called a quantum mechanical, called a weak measurement, or classically it's a weak perturbation, but we do this in a one particular point in the momentum or the focal plane of the field. And then we can go back to the image, image field through these four F systems and then make a strong polarization measurement at the image planes. By through these two-step consequences, the, the, we can show that, oh, this is a quantum mechanical expression, show that what we measured um, finally is actually proportional to the inverse of the transverse wave function of the photons. Um, the advantage, although it is in the inverse, but the advantage of this measurement is all different positions on the image plane can be measured simultaneously, and which means it becomes a single shot measurement that we can get a lot of the, uh, all the complex amplitude, so I call it a, a, a complex glasses that can see the complex nature of light. And uh, this really started off, and we have a, um, a bunch of the agents actually are getting interested in this, and Bob was actually, um, it, uh, able to convince ONR to fund this type of research, and we have been working on to see, okay, can we make the direct measurement, or can we make more fancier glasses to show, see more? So this is one of the, oh, so this is the, still the demo of what we have done in the first complex uh, the glasses. Essentially, you can see that we take still four polarization measurement, but by just simply subtracting them, we can show the real and imaginary part of the field um, in a single shot. Because it's a single shot experiment, uh, we can actually monitor the change of the phase structures of a coherent beam in real time. And the OSA would really like it, so it was highlighted as the image of the month when our paper came out in Optica. Um, so for the time being, I won't st stop too much here. And then we want to see, okay, so we have a way to, I think this uh, is dying, but uh, we have the ability to see a complex field, but that only applies to a coherent scalar beam that has a fixed polarizations. And since vector beams has actually been uh, recently attracting a lot of research uh, uh, interests, can we see the polarization and the complex field simultaneously? Or can we characterize the full spatial feature of a vector beam? And we come up with the idea, and this is the experimental schematics, showing that by using a, a first separate or coherently separate the two polarization component of a vector beam, we actually can do that. Um, this is one of the experiments that I showed that I have a, a two components, left circular polarized and right circular polarized light. If you put the right Zernike polynomials, we can simultaneously, and everything's measured in a single shot. Oh. And um, you can see that we can measure not only the transverse complex field of each polarization, but we can also review the uh, the polarization pro profiles in, um, in real time. And this is also a funny uh, interest that I didn't know that by combining two Zernikis, we can get actually the Gamadian uh, symbols used in the Buddhism. Luckily, we, we got the, the correct rotation of the Gamadian structures. Um, and this is another example that we can, we can completely characterize a four Pongari beam that the the, every possible polarization can be found on the transverse uh, profile of the beams. And we have done more. This is a recent work, ongoing work that we can actually see complex fields at multiple wavelengths together. And this is one advantage showing that, okay, by 
measuring simultaneously the multiple wavelengths, we can do a height measurement that is far beyond the dynamic range of uh, wavelength. And also, this is a quick, we not only can do coherent beams, but we can also see the partially coherent beams. And here, it's a direct measurement. It's a single shot direct measurement. Uh, these are the theory, and these are all single shot measurements showing the, uh, this is in the classical language, is the coherence matrix of a superposition, incoherent superposition of three modes of the field. And um, we're trying to see what are the applications to now we have the tool to actually really look at the spatial coherence of light. And at last, I'll show uh, quickly um, the, the advantages. Since now we have the tools to see different degrees of freedom of light, what can we do about it? Uh, one example I show is uh, we can do a three-dimensional imaging for an incoherent scene that it seems not that obvious at the, at the first. And here shows that I can have an incoherent P and L at two different planes. It's a single shot measurement, but we can refocus and decide where is the, uh, the P and C L located. And there is another movie showing the single, par a single, single particle tracking. Um, but it's the same story that because it's the sing single shot measurement, we can do type this type of trackings. And, and last, I, being with, working with Bob, I was had the opportunity to work with uh, some of the best scientists in the world. And this work was inspired by my trip to Germany when I worked with uh, Gerd Leuks. And the, the key here is we all know that high spec, we can use structured light to do free space communication to increase the, the capacity of a channel. However, due to the at atmospheric uh, turbulence, most of this advantage is quickly goes away. And it took me quite a while to show, find a way that we, this is our recent experimental result showing that by using not a scalar beams with OEMs, but with vo uh, vector vortex beams, we are able to transmit actually reasonably reliable data using, uh, this experiment shows 18 levels. We recently expand to 34 levels of light through uh, a moderate turbulence where the rate of variance about one. So with that, uh, I come to my conclusion. It has been really a, a fun to work with Bob who has continuously filled me with uh, inspiration, passion, and joy whenever I feel down or excited in the journey um, of academics. And hopefully, um, I'm continuing this exciting work. Um, and once we have more super glasses, people will get more, uh, will be more amazed of what we see. And this is, shark this is actually a real device which is called a Magic Leap. It's an AR VR device, but I really appreciate the, the shape of the glasses that they pick. Um, <laughs> So at last, um, we, we see that uh, developing different, there is really no limit that how much we can develop. And this is happy birthday, Bob. Thank you very much.